Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R630 server. And on this video, we're going to specifically focus on RAID, how to configure it, how to install it, and what are the different options. Let's get rolling. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R630 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like, smash that subscribe. All right, so on this um, video, we're going to really uh, specifically focus on the RAID, the different options, how to configure it, how to install it, all that good stuff. Uh, so we're going to start with the different options. All right, so I pulled out uh, four options to start, even though there's a couple more options than that. Um, in a minute, we'll actually pull up the graph as well, and we'll show you all the different options you can use, because technically, the first option is an onboard software, which is the S130. Uh, that'll get you a couple different RAID levels, uh, 0, 1, 5, and 10. Uh, it's not highly recommended to use the onboard software, but it is a solution that works for a lot of people. The next option is right here, and this is an HBA 330 pass-through. Unfortunately, there's no RAID levels, and uh, it's really just more of a pass-through than anything, okay? The next is an H330 Mini Mono, which the RAID levels are gonna be a 0, 1, 5, 10, or 50. Uh, the difference from the uh, onboard software is the 50 RAID level. It offers uh, no cache, which is the uh, one downfall, really, uh, but the H330 is a great uh, option, especially for storage, okay? Uh, the next option is the H730, which will offer you RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, or 60. It's got one gigabit or one gigabyte of cache. It's a, a great option. It's the most common option uh, for the R630. It's what we build with most. It's what we actually recommend. It's a great great RAID option, and again, the most common, most prevalent, okay? If you want to go all the way up and max it out, uh, you have the H730P, which is going to be two uh, gigabits of cache. It's going to be uh, RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, or 60. Uh, another great option, just a little bit of an upgrade as far as the cache from the H730, um, but again, a great option. All of these options are PCIe uh, Gen 3.0. All of them offer speeds of uh, 6 uh, giga gigabit per second on SAT and 12 gigabit per second on SAS. Okay? The uh, one option I'm not showing right here is in the actual PCIe where you'd put it, uh, an adapter into the actual PCIe slot and you could put an H830. Uh, which would be very similar to the H730P in the sense of the RAID levels are 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, or 60 with 2 gigabits cash. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll pull up uh, the chart right now or the graph so you can see all of the different levels, the speeds, uh, whether it's a RAID hardware or software. Uh, the cache, the RAID levels, basically everything we just covered. Here's a good chart that you could pause if you need to, but it'll show you all the options and basically just some of the, the main points of variation between them, okay? Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open up one of the systems. I'm gonna show you how to install the RAID and the cable itself. All right, now we're gonna actually install the RAID and then after that, we'll show you how to configure it. So first things first, make sure the latch is set to unlock, pop it open. Real simple, like any Dell server you've been in before. So you'll notice uh, we have the uh, the SAS cable is actually already installed. If you don't have the SAS cable installed, whether you're putting in RAID or not, none of the drives will be recognized. You have to have a SAS cable if you want the backplane to basically work. So that's important. Um, so just wanted to throw that out there for anyone that's out there. Uh, that doesn't have you know wondering why the drives aren't recognized. Maybe they don't have a SAS cable Well, that that's your problem right there whether you have RAID or not you, you have to have a SAS cable All right, so you'll see there's two screws right here. We're gonna get these unlocked or unscrewed I should say All right, so the cable itself is now free so we're gonna lift this up And there's some resistance right here, so it's almost better to lift one side up and then kind of uh, maneuver it out. Okay, so now we'll see this is actually up. Now when you install the cable, there's some plastic pieces here that you kind of want to slide the back in first. And you'll see that the, uh, the two screw holes 
it just came down flush perfectly on it. I just want to kind of re-show that a couple times. Right there, it just falls down perfectly. And then again, these plastic pieces can be kind of difficult, so you kind of almost need to maneuver it and wedge it back in. All right, and then you need to screw the cable back into place, okay? And if, um, if you're not sure how to install the cable, which is honestly uh, very simple if you're at home doing, uh, the cable, you can honestly watch our NVMe video that we did in this series, and it's very much the same. You just need to make sure it's behind this plastic piece and that you line up the ports correctly. Outside of that, it's, it's very, very simple to do. And hopefully the cable is actually already installed because you do, like I said, need that to be able to have any drives function at all. So there you go, just that simple. That's how you install it. Now we're gonna go, show it, uh, gonna go ahead and show you how to configure it. And um, that'll actually need us to actually plug this in and get everything going. So I actually installed the NIC card real quick so that I can get it to the internet and we'll be right back. All right, so now that we've seen the different RAID options, we've seen how to install the RAID cards, we're gonna actually figure out how to configure it. So on the boot screen menu, uh, you're gonna want to click, uh, click Control R, and this is gonna take you to the actual uh, RAID screen, uh, also known as the virtual disk management. Um, when you get to the virtual disk management screen, um, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is actually select the, uh, the RAID card. In this case, it's gonna be the H330. So we're gonna click uh, the H330 there. It's gonna give you a couple of different options when we select it. We're gonna hit clear config, because that's the first thing you wanna do is get rid of the uh, old configuration to set up a new one. Um, it's gonna give you uh, the warning message. We're just gonna click yes, because we wanna clear it. Uh, we're gonna go back into our H330, so we're gonna click on it again. The same options are gonna pop up. This time we're gonna hit create new VD. Under this, we're gonna uh, go to the RAID level that you wanna select. What we want uh, for this option is we're gonna do RAID 5. Of course, you can click whatever you want here. Um, after you have selected your RAID level, you need to pick the disk that you wanna add to it. So we're gonna select the individual disk and you see the X popping up on the left there. So after we select the individual disks, uh, you can come in and add a name if you want. Click Advanced. Uh, under Advanced, you're gonna go to Initialize. Uh, you want to initialize this and it will give you a warning message that's going to uh, destroy the current data. Um, click yes if that's okay. Click okay. Click okay again. Click okay again. And that's what we're doing right now is a bunch of okays. And after we've um, done all the okays and it's given us all the messages, you've actually now configured your RAID uh, for your R630 server. Um, it wasn't that difficult to do. You just need to follow a few uh, strategic steps. Uh, you can see there it's showing that it's at a RAID 5. Uh, we want to exit, so click OK. And then when you boot it back up, you can um, check it uh, as well by going back into uh, the same screen by hitting, you know, Control R and getting into the, you know, to the RAID screen to make sure everything is still good. So thanks for stopping by today. Learn a little bit more about how to configure the RAID on your R630 server. Uh, do us a favor, find anything in this video useful, click that like, smash that subscribe. And if you're looking to an order an R630 yourself, uh, we custom build them here. We'd love the opportunity to earn your business. Please do us a favor, email us at sales at cloudninja.com. That's sales at cloudninja.com. Or if you're just looking for any spares, RAID, uh, CPUs, RAM, drives, etc., we'd love to help you out. Thanks for stopping by. Take care, guys.